Young Charlotte lived by the mountainside in a lonely, dreary spot, no other dwelling for three miles round except her father's cot. And yet on many a winter's eve, young swains would gather there, for her father kept a social abode and she was very fair. Her father liked to see her dressed, just like some city belle. She was the only child he had. He loved his daughter well. Her hair was black as raven's wings, her skin was lily fair, and her teeth were like the pearls of white. None with her could compare. At a village just 16 miles off, there's a merry ball tonight. Although the air is freezing cold, her heart is warm and light. And there she watched with an anxious look, till a well-known voice she heard, and driving up to the cottage door, young Charles in his sleigh appeared. The mother to her daughter said, These blankets round you fold, for it is a dreadful night, you know, you'll catch your death of cold. Oh no, oh no, the darling cried, she laughed like a gypsy queen, for to ride in blankets muffled up, I never could be seen. My silken cloak is quite enough, you know it's lined throughout. Besides, I have a silk mantle to tie my face about. The gloves and bonnet being on, they jumped into the sleigh, and away they did ride over the mountainside and the hills so far away. There is music in the sound of bells, as over the hills they go. What a creaking wake the runners make, as they bite the frozen snow. And away they go so silently, till five gold miles were passed, and Charles with these few frozen words... The silence broke at last. Such a night as this I never knew, my lines I scarce can hold. With a trembling voice young Charlotte cried, I am exceeding cold. He cracked the whip, he urged his steed much faster than before, until at last five other cold miles, in silence they rode more. How very fast the freezing air is gathering on my brow. With a trembling voice young Charlotte cried, I'm growing warmer now. And away they did ride o'er the mountainside, and through the pale starlight, until the village inn they reached, and the ballroom hove in sight. When they reached the inn, young Charles jumped out and gave his hand to her. Why sit you there like a monument, and have no power to stir? He called her once, he called her twice, she answered not a word. He called off her her hand again, but still she never stirred. He stripped the mantle off her brow, and the pale stars on her shone, and quickly into the lighted hall, her helpless form was born. They tried with all within their power, her life for to restore, but Charlotte was a frozen corpse, and is never to speak more. He threw himself down by her side, and the bitter tears did flow. He said, my dear and intended bride, you never more shall know. He threw his arms around her neck, he kissed her marble brow, and his thoughts went back to the place where she said, I'm growing warmer now. They bore her out into the sleigh, and Charles with her rode home. And when they reached the cottage door, oh how her parents mourned. They mourned the loss of their daughter dear, and Charles mourned o'er uh, her doom, until at last his heart did break. Now they both slumber in one tomb. On happier note, these dolls went on to become bearers of good fortune. The doll's small shape made it ideal for another purpose. Hiding coins or figurines in cakes is a tradition with ancient roots. A tiny doll in a Mardi Gras king cake, for example, is meant to bring posterity to the finder, or to decide who will provide next year's cake. In England, they were often hidden in Christmas cakes and puddings, with the child that found them being deemed the luckiest. The normal cost of a penny meant that many children and families could afford them, adding to their immense popularity. Boys were not excluded from the toys or their cautions, with male figures being given the name Charlie, the name of the young man in the poem who escorted Charlotte on her last ride. The lesson of listening to one's parents was strongly reinforced by the accessories that soon became attached to the little dolls, such as their own blankets and metal caskets carved with words of warning. Frozen Charlottes are one of mine and mum's favourite things to find. On film we've found two so far with heads, We've found many a headless. And as a sneak preview, we have made a film that probably won't be out for a while where um, I may or may not find another one. And you can imagine for yourselves how excited I was when that happened.
Okay, well, this, these are our waterless um, frozen Charlotte snow globes. The plan was originally to make them with water in and glitter, and we ordered some corks, but none of them fit. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they're waterless snow globes, which are, are a thing. They're a thing. They've become more popular in recent years. But yeah, these are our tiny little Charlottes left out in the snow which you now know is not very yes happy <laughs> but these ones are they have been yeah so yeah um as you heard that the story of frozen charlotte um so it, it's a very very sad poem but as we said they did become happier things and yeah we just absolutely love finding them and we've had a few comments in the past about asking what a frozen charlotte is so we thought we'd do it as part of mudmas it's christmasy. Sort of christmasy well they you you know it's oh, snow was it there and puddings? they used to be hidden in christmas puddings and christmas cakes and given as like stocking fillers so yeah they they are a christmasy thing thing and, and christmas it's like ghost stories and things isn't it mm, that christmas carol last yeah. year so yeah these are them um i did make one for myself but it went a bit <laughs> so we're going to try and some of the <laughs> fell over and some of the resin got onto the... She's uh, in a blizzard. So she's in, yeah, so we're going to, I'm going to get in there with a thin scalpel and try and save her. So she may, you may see her on our Christmas tree later on in Mudmouth. I can salvage her. But these are the ones for the shop. So there's two in paste pots. This, I can't do it because my shadow. That one's in a, who? David. David. Crick. Crick. David Crick. Crick. David Crick. I've never heard of that paste pot. I'll put along the screen what, if I can find it, what that would have been. So that's in that big paste pot. But I just thought paste pots were perfect because they have like a little window. And then this one's just a normal, random. That was a big motorbike. Yes, random um, paste pot. And then this one is in this little bottle. Dink. It's, it's got a slight dink. And then this one's in this one. But yeah, they don't. They also don't have to necessarily be Christmas decorations. Just be little. Yeah, the one. If I can save this one, this one will just be on our shelf. So yeah. Um, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Mudmas. Uh, I hope the poem didn't make you too sad. <laughs> and um, we'll see you tomorrow, tomorrow when we are back on a summer beach. <laughs> Bye. Bye.